One of the most underrated piloting skills is the ability to make a turn exactly the same every single time. This means maintaining the same altitude, airspeed, and turn rate throughout the turn. It's really easy to mess up one or more of these during a turn, but it takes some skill to keep all three the same. Want to know the easy way to keep all of these steady? I'll show you how to do that in this video. Early aviation pioneers like the Wright brothers found out very quickly that you don't use the rudder to change course like a boat. To turn, they needed to use the other control surfaces on the plane, namely the ailerons which are located on the wings, along with the elevators which we covered in this video. Typically, the ailerons are on the outer edge of the wings to take advantage of leverage. These are different than the flaps we used in the takeoff video, which are usually located on the inner trailing edge of the wings. This is because the inner part of the wing typically generates the most lift, especially when the wing is tapered. Some aircraft use the same control surface for flaps and ailerons. When this happens, these control surfaces are known as flapperons. Ailerons will bank the aircraft, which will cause the plane to turn. But you'll notice it comes with a side effect, a loss of altitude. Let's talk about why this happens. When our plane is tilted to the side, part of the upward lift is being redirected as a horizontal force. There is an upward component and a sideways component to it. As the sideways component increases, so does our rate of turn. We need that horizontal part to turn the plane. This is how the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge explains it. The rate of turn can be controlled by adjusting the angle of bank. But whenever we're in a turn, the upward part of our lift isn't as strong as it is in level flight. If you had just enough upward lift to balance out weight and remain in level flight before the turn, then you wouldn't have enough for level flight after you bank the aircraft. So without any other changes, simply rolling the aircraft will cause a loss of altitude. Another way to think of this is to imagine these arrows as representing the strength of the forces in flight. The upward lift arrow needs to reach this line to balance out the strength of the downward pull of gravity. But when you're in a bank, that same arrow no longer reaches the line. To maintain level flight in a turn, we need to increase the length of the lift arrow until it reaches the top line again. So how do we increase lift? If you said by increase in angle of attack, then you would be correct. So in a turn, you'll have to pull back on the controls to increase angle of attack and lift to stay at your starting altitude. This is how you maintain altitude in a turn, but increasing angle of attack also causes induced drag, which we covered in this video. So now that you solved the problem of losing altitude, you have a different problem to deal with, losing airspeed to induce drag. You compensate for this by increasing throttle in a turn to keep the airspeed needle from moving. If you ever wondered why high thrust is so important to fighters, this is why. It's not just for going fast in a straight line. That thrust is also critical to maintain speed in a fast-turning dogfight, too. So in the case of a fighter plane, high thrust translates to increased turn performance. Right now, we want to learn how to make a consistent turn that maintains not just speed and altitude, but also a repeatable turn rate. So let's go over how professional pilots do that. If you make a level turn at 360 knots with the aircraft banked at 45 degrees, then it will take two minutes to make a 360 degree turn or one minute to do a 180. This translates to three degrees per second, or what is called a standard rate turn among professional pilots. You can get the same turn rate flying 300 knots in a 40 degree bank, or 240 knots in a 33 degree bank. No matter which one you choose, you'll do three degrees of turn per second, which lets you plan how long a turn will take. This is why the standard rate turn is used by real world pilots, and you can use it too in DCS. In many aircraft, you'll find an instrument that looks like this, where the airplane symbol banks with the aircraft. When its wingtip reaches the lower mark, that means that the plane is making a standard rate turn. You might also see something like this at the bottom of our trainer's ADI. This is also a type of turn rate indicator. But let's say you're flying an aircraft that doesn't have this instrument. You can use these marks on the ADI instead. The marks represent 10, 20, 30, and 60 degrees of bank. So if we were doing 240 knots, we would need 33 degrees of bank for our standard rate turn, which would be just past the 30 degree mark. And if we were doing 360 knots, we would want 45 degrees of bank, which is exactly halfway between the 30 and 60 marks. Now all you have to do is maintain speed, altitude, and bank angle, and your turns will be consistent and repeatable. Let's go over how you can do this. You may have noticed that the speeds I used are divisible by 60. 
This is because speeds divisible by 60 make it easy to calculate how long your trip will take. 240 knots is 4 miles per minute, and 360 is 6 miles per minute. So let's say you wanted to fly 8 miles out and then circle back to your starting point. You would fly 240 knots for 2 minutes, make your standard rate turn back the way you came in 1 minute, then you would fly another 2 minutes and make one last 1 minute turn to end up where you started. Before you even start the flight, you know it'll take 6 minutes and you will end up where you started without having to use a navigation system. Now all of this involves spending a lot of time heads down in the instruments. As a pilot, you should try to spend as much time as possible looking outside the cockpit to watch for things like other aircraft and terrain. So let me share a trick that lets you do that while also maintaining a level turn. Whenever you bank the aircraft, you'll notice a spot on the canopy that remains still while the rest of the world appears to pivot around it. This spot is where your plane is heading, so you have a visual indicator of your flight path. The U.S. Air Force has a name for this phenomenon. It's called the bug spot. And here's how the Air Force says we use the bug spot. To maintain level flight, the bug spot should remain on or near the horizon throughout the turn. That's it. Make a mental note of the bug spot and keep it steady with the horizon. Now you can look outside and make your turn. Also, keep in mind this additional note. As bank increases, increase back pressure to compensate for the loss of vertical lift and raise the bug spot to slightly above the horizon. Remember that as we roll the aircraft, the lift vector is also rolling, so we need to compensate. Now you should have what you need to know to do a turn the same way every time. See if you can take our trainer and make a one minute turn to a heading 180 degrees from where you started. You can also try doing a 360 in two minutes. This will all come in handy when we get to navigation. We'll go into greater detail on air navigation in a future set of videos on this channel. For now, it's important to understand that the key to a repeatable turn is to maintain speed, altitude, and turn rate. We have several tools available to do that, like our instruments and the bug spot. So I hope you learned something useful about turning from this video. And as always, thanks for watching.